June 6, 1996. A mysterious explosion destroys the Chernobyl research facility near Moscow. Lucifer Alpha, a powerful biological weapon under secret development there, is released into the atmosphere, creating a deadly biohazard. Carried by the trade winds, Lucifer Alpha spreads throughout Eastern Europe and Eurasia, destroying 80% of the populace. Half of the world's people die. The greatest biohazard in history later becomes known simply as the catastrophe. But at this time, who could have possibly imagined that the ultimate biohazard wouldn't occur for another half century? 50 years later, mankind faces its greatest crisis, the appearance of a mysterious android life form. Its purpose and origin are unknown. Is it a new form of weapon? Or perhaps an invasion from some other world? They appear during winter, killing humans and infiltrating society by taking the place of their victims. Employing an artificial skin, they can sweat and even bleed. Part organic, part machine, they're almost impossible to distinguish from those they kill. As they steal their victims' bodies in order to take their place, these mysterious invaders become known as Snatchers. Originally releasing in 1988 for the PC-8801 and MSX2, Snatcher is an extremely early title from Hideo Kojima that is quite frankly far too good to be this obscure. Being the movie nerd that he is, Kojima basically mashed up Blade Runner and The Terminator to make a science fiction visual novel masterpiece, and the only time the Western world ever got a chance to sample it was via a late era release on the Mega CD. Now in the grand scheme of CD-ROM gaming, 1994 is still pretty early in the history of the medium, as single speed CD-ROM drives for PCs only became readily available in the early 90s, and the first big CD-ROM mega hit Mist only released in 1993, so Snatcher definitely landed at the right time. Unfortunately, it landed on the wrong system. The install base for the Mega CD was extremely small in comparison to the growing PC gaming market, and unfortunately, the game never found much of an audience in the West until much later when Kojima Fever took over with the release of Metal Gear Solid in 1998. This unfortunately means that the Mega CD version is now one of the rarest games for the system, and the only way to experience the game in English. Which sucks, because Snatcher absolutely deserves to be played by everyone. Snatcher is an incredible piece of interactive entertainment. It uses the CD-ROM format perfectly to enhance the game's presentation with rich, gorgeous sound design and atmospherics, while also adding a full voice cast to act out the game's many cutscenes, as well as a fair bit of the in-game dialogue. What the? It's Little John. Little John? Yes, Jean-Jacques Gibson's personal navigator. Also, check out this introduction. It doesn't get much cooler than that. Snatcher puts you in control of Gillian Seed, a newly appointed investigator at Junker, a special division of police officers tasked with tracking down Snatchers. Snatchers are cyborgs who have killed humans and then taken over their lives. As you play the game you slowly uncover the secrets of why the Snatchers do what they do, and in true Kojima fashion you unravel a mystery which is much greater than you could have imagined. The game plays out in a fairly linear fashion. More often than not, you're just working your way through various menus and dialogue trees until something triggers the next event in the game. But thankfully, the presentation, writing and performances keep you engaged despite the limited interaction. This is not to say that the voice acting is anything exceptional, but for 1994 these performances are pretty good for the early days of CD-ROM gaming, and it really does help with keeping you engaged with the characters and the story. That should be enough to make your duties as a junker quite clear. 
This is your Junker ID card. It will identify you as a Junker. Carrying it allows you to exercise your special authority. I see. Sort of like a police officer's badge, huh? And, uh, here's some money. It's not much, but you'll need it to carry out your investigation. Cash? Credit cards aren't accepted in some regions of the city. You'll need this sooner or later. Sounds like it's a rough place out there. Go see Harry, the engineer. He's got your equipment ready for you. The only time the action changes is during a few scant shooting sections, which basically tasks you with moving a reticule around a grid and pressing fire when an enemy appears. These can be played with either a standard Mega Drive controller or Konami's Justifier light gun, but using the Justifier is nothing special and more of a gimmick as you have to switch back to a standard Mega Drive controller to navigate the in-game menus, which is basically 95% of the in-game action. Being a Hideo Kojima game, Snatcher is absolutely drenched in detail and references to other stuff. My favourite area of the game is this area of Neo Kobe City that contains a lot of neon advertising signage. Keep an eye out for any in-game phone numbers because these can all be called using the game's video phone and often uncover some lovely little easter eggs. There's also a great scene where Gillian has to gain access to a masquerade bar and when you enter you can see that a lot of the customers are dressed as different characters from various Konami games. Later in the game you are also introduced to the character of Random Hajil, who is entirely modelled on Sting's appearance in David Lynch's Dune film. It's all extremely nerdy stuff for science fiction nerds like me, but it does help flesh out the in-game world and add some great detail that helps the game feel more alive. Until Snatcher becomes more readily available, the Mega CD port is an essential play. I would never suggest paying the ridiculous collector's prices the game goes for nowadays, so do yourself a favour and just emulate the damn thing until Konami finally release a new port for Western markets on modern systems. Konami clearly still have some affection towards the game because the Japanese PC Engine CD version did show up on the recent PC Engine Mini, so fingers crossed Konami can pull their finger out and at the very least just re-release the fantastic Mega CD version on modern platforms. Gillian Seed, estimated age 31. Three years ago, he and his wife Jamie Seed are taken into protective custody in the Siberian neutral zone by the 17th Siberian Investigative Force. Both Gillian and Jamie suffer from severe amnesia, their memories of events prior to being picked up in Siberia lost in a mysterious mental fog. Two years ago, after a vain attempt to rebuild their marriage, Jamie and Gillian separate. Following extensive special military training, Gillian is ordered to report to Neo Kobe City as a junker, effective today.